I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm thrilled to be talking to Sarah Fisher, who takes on playing double duties of the roles of both Andy and London in the film Someone Like You. Um, and it's such a huge monumental task to kind of go through to the process of developing a character, but essentially have double the workload because you're developing the two of them together. Um, and especially in kind of finding what are the things that they share as traits, but wanting them to be their own people. And so what was the starting point for really figuring out how to develop these two characters side by side for you? Yeah, well, when I first got the audition, it was one of the things I was most drawn to, most excited about was, you know, as an actor, I love a challenge of of diving into a really, a really layered character. And that's already such a such a huge challenge in and of itself. So also let alone to dive into a Karen Kingsbury character that are again just so full of love. And she really pull she just pours her heart and soul into everything that she that she puts down on the page. And it was one of the things I was most excited about was, yeah, the opportunity to be able to play these these two beautiful um, characters. And yeah, it was definitely something to navigate. You know, some days on set, we would be going back and forth between an Andy scene and the London scene. And it was it was really about paying close attention to the detail in that prep work of, you know, how does one laugh differently? How do they present themselves? How do they talk to someone they care about? And you know, how would they both take this interview differently? Uh, you know, making sure that they have this this little sparkle that they both carry. That is the the relationship being that they're sisters, but that they also being aware that they've been raised uh, in two different homes, uh, making sure that I made them different enough that it was believable. So yeah, definitely a very exciting challenge for sure. <laughs> And you were mentioning Karen Kingsbury, whose novel this is this is based on, and she was incredibly involved throughout the entire process of this film being made. And so what are some of kind of the resources or tools that she was able to provide to you in terms of the conversations you were able to have with her and the questions you were able to ask with her beyond even just having her text in the form of the book? Oh, yeah. I mean, that was in one of them. It was such a luxury to have Karen on set it was so incredible. One, I call her second mom. She calls me second daughter at this point. She is beyond lovely and such a good person. And she she personally funded this whole film. Her family put everything into this. So, you know, everyone involved, her husband would be on set. One of their good family friends would be helping with crafty. Obviously, I was there all the time because I'm just always at the craft food truck. Um, but it was just so fun. It was so personable. And having Karen on set was so helpful because to have the author, the writer, the person where this story had come from this, this, you know, the story really came to her. It was imprinted on her heart and fell onto the page uh, beautifully. And to have her on set along the, the whole process uh, on the whole journey was really remarkable because any questions we had, she was right there. And these characters came from her brain, her heart, her fingertips, this all came from her. So it was really quite a remarkable experience. And she was just so supportive. She was constantly, she would be crying. She would be laughing. We would just like hug and hold each other after really emotional scenes. Like it couldn't have been more personal. And I think that's a really beautiful way to work. And as you were mentioning, you know, you're playing two characters who are biologically connected, but they've grown up never having the chance to know each other. Um, was it helpful to kind of research that that concept of, you know, twins and siblings who've been separated from birth and just kind of look at that idea of what is nature versus nurture or just to really focus on the specific script and and the writing for this project in particular? Yeah, you know, I think something that was really helpful for me was reading Karen's book. Right. That was that was so helpful because you kind of you get to dive into these characters where you get to actually understand and and really think about how they're feeling. And on such a deep level, you know, that's the beauty of novels. It's such a it's such a wonderful tool that I have as an actor when you're when you're actually basing a movie off of a book. It's it's such an incredible. Yeah, an incredible tool to use for for the work. So yeah, I think it was really about diving into the specifics of the of the book to make sure that these two specific women that I could really bring them to life in the way that Karen had intended originally. And yeah, I think I think what it is as well is breaking down what I thought. For example, Andy, her life gets flipped upside down, and so for me as an actor, it's it was a lot of really considering, okay, cool. So how is she feeling in her core and her gut? Like, where is she at with this? How does she feel about this? And for example, if it's feeling a little isolated, if it's feeling lonely, if it's feeling lost, it's, you know, I'm human. We've, we've all gone through those hard things. And what I love about what Karen does is she doesn't shy away from, from 
the authenticity of it all from the the emotionally heavier and darker parts. She doesn't hide away from any of it, which I think is so is so wonderful and so exciting as an actor. Um, so yeah, I think it was, yeah, really focused on how, how can I relate to her and have I felt these things before? Yeah, of course I have. So how, you know, diving deep into that part of the work as well to really make sure that I was telling the story in the right way, because you're absolutely right. It's, it's a really important story to tell. And I, I wanted to make sure that, that it was done in, in the most authentic, honest way possible. And that, that's such a great point about that being kind of like the path and the inroad to like the emotions where even if you haven't experienced these things, you understand what those feelings are. And, you know, in, in playing London at the beginning of the film, there's not that much time to really build her for the audience and to kind of give them this sense of just a really full life. You know, what's her relationship with her family? What's her relationship with her best friend? Um, what's the relationship that she's in that maybe isn't the one for forever, but was fun for a little bit. Um, and so how did you set about making sure that you were building this kind of like really richly thought out character, even though you don't have as much screen time with her as you do with Andy later in the film? Right. Very good question. Well, I think one is we had a luxury of before filming, we we actually were shooting, sorry, not shooting rehearsal. We were rehearsing. Um, we were rehearsing for two weeks before we started getting the cameras up. So what was so great about that is me and Jake just, ate, we, we were able to just become friends. And what was really nice about that is, you know, London and Dawson, while there are feelings there more so on Dawson's side than London's, I think, you know, they really are just best friends. So what was so nice for Jake and I is usually you're used to getting on set day one and you you shake someone's hand. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, we're best friends since childhood. Let's go, cameras up, action, and you're in. So what was so nice is Jake and I had already built a friendship at that point. So I think it was about, yeah, making sure that the comfortability was there between them. Like in a lot of the scenes with London and Dawson, she's like kind of like, messing with them she's kind of like not jumping on his back per se but she's kind of like grabbing his shoulders and they're kind of pushing each other around because it's very familiar and that's what we wanted to make sure it came across and was very clear because of course when Andy comes in it's all so new and that's what's so interesting for Dawson it is he's trying to handle you know the fact that she looks so much like her but he doesn't have that familiarity he doesn't have that relationship there so yeah so I mean I feel like yeah, I feel like that was that was something that that was really important for us to focus on because you don't get a lot of time with London, but we want to make sure that the audience still falls in love with her a little bit because they do have this beautiful relationship. And it's one of those things where you're like, ah, it's like so close, but then it doesn't quite fit. And that's where Andy kind of comes in and both are beautiful relationships. They just look different. And that's such a great point as well in terms of just like the chemistry, because like you said, you know, it's not necessarily the right fit with him in London, but there are kind of like right before we lose her, she's kind of, it looks like she's starting to consider the idea of like, okay, maybe this is something worth exploring and seeing what this could yeah. be. And so you have two very different types of chemistry that you're playing with Dawson as a character. So how did you make sure that, you know, one of them felt very like rich and lived in and we love each other, but maybe it's not that love. And the other one felt more like kind of like a romantic getting to know you love. Yeah, I, well, I think, I think the thing with, with London is she, she kind of, she kind of just loves to tease Dawson a lot. Like she, she, she's so there, but she, she can't take that step. It's, it's hard for her to take that final step with him, but she, she teases the idea with him all the time. And it's just kind of, it's almost become a part of their friendship and a part of their relationship. And with Andy, again, you know, their mannerisms are so different. Their behavior is so different. Uh, London and Andy, that when Andy comes in, she, she's, she's, she's very, She's more reserved than London is, but it goes so deep. She really loves the people in her life so deeply. And, you know, yeah, I feel like, I feel like it was just, again, paying, paying a lot of close attention to the detail of how these two women are different and making sure that their differences connect with Dawson and his character in very different, but important ways. So what London brings out in Dawson is beautiful, but so is what Andy brings out in Dawson and how they connect. And what I love about Andy's relationship with Dawson, which is I think kind of the heart and core of why, of why hopefully audiences will fall so in love with them as well, is because 
you know, it's one thing to go on a date, first date, and, you know, you're coming in with every, you know, you're happy, everything's good. You're like, good step forward. And, you know, I'm, I'm bringing you all the best stuff. That is me. But when you meet someone and you're not trying to meet someone, there's no intention there to meet someone. But you happen to meet someone at a time where you're both going through something really hard and you both, both of your lives have been flipped upside down and both of you feel like you're in a place where you're a little bit lost. I think that is what's so beautiful about their relationship is that they, they like each other so much. And through those hard times when life got really tough, they fell for each other, but they fell for that core, real, authentic, um, deep side of the other person. And that's what I think is really special is that they both weren't sparkly for each other at all. They were like, I'm going through something really real and really tough. And then they both decided to open each other's arms for each other and show support and love and understanding and happen to accidentally fall for each other. And I think that's why their relationship specifically is just really beautiful. And with Andy as well, she's going through this journey of trying to get to know a sister that she never got the chance to meet in person. And at first she's kind of trying to absorb herself into London's world. You know, she even ends up getting a job working at the same cafe where London used to, but kind of through that, she gradually realizes it's not that I need to try and absorb myself into her world. It's that I need to find my space kind of in between the life that I've had up to this point, what I now know, and this new version of myself. And so how did you set about crafting and creating that journey for Andy in that way? Yeah, that's a brilliant point. Yeah, you're right. I think she, at first, at first, I think she doesn't, it's so hard for her to sit with the the news that she's been given that I feel like I feel like she, she's, she almost goes meet to meet her biological parents without knowing completely what she's looking for. I think she finds herself there because she doesn't know what else to do. I think she's not sure how to handle the situation, but she, she feels a kind of a, an impulse or she, you know, she feels strongly that she should go meet these people. But I don't know if she knows what she's going to find. I think she just, again, you know, her life's been flipped upside down and she's looking for something. She wants to be able to hold on to something. I think she feels like she's stranded in an ocean and she's trying to hold on to something, you know? And so I think, I think it was really a journey for her of, of growth, self-discovery. And there's so much beauty in that. You know, we've all been through it where you go through a tough time and all of a sudden you find yourself learning new things about who you are, you know, you're you're handling situations that you may have not ever believed you'd be in. And it, it's a really beautiful journey for her of, you know, coming kind of back full circle at the end of it and realizing that it's all love and family's family, no matter what it looks like. And that she's now got two incredible families who are so important to her. And she's also now got Dawson. So yeah, it was just, it was definitely a huge part of the the story that I love so much is, yeah, is the growth journey for her and what she kind of comes to find in the end of it all, which again, this just brings us right back to the fact that there's just so much love involved all around her. And, and, you know, that idea that you just said of like, there is so much love around her and it feels like part of why she struggles so much is because she has a really good relationship with her parents. It's not that she's kind of grown up feeling like they're hiding anything from her or not right. telling things. And she'll go play doubles at tennis with her boyfriend and her parents together. And every year her mom will tell her the story of when she was born. Um, right. And so was it important to make sure that in the scenes that you had with her parents together before she kind of takes this journey by herself, that you were kind of capturing all of those kind of touch points and, and the heart of their relationship so that it really makes sense as to why she feels like she's lost so much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the chemistry between her and her and her, her parents is so, is so important that you see that she's grown up such in such a beautiful way. She's so close with her family. They're so involved in each other's lives in every way. Yeah. They go and play sports together. They play cards together. Like it's a really tight knit family. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what kind of shakes her world so much is she, you know, and she, her mother also gave birth to her. So for her, it's just, I think this seemed so impossible to her, which is why it's such, it's such an interesting story to tell. And, you know, all of a sudden she, she has to kind of navigate this. And I don't think she knows what she thinks or how she feels, which is why in the movie you see her experience 
so many things at one point she's heartbroken at one point she's really angry and another point like she kind of goes through the motions here and it's just a complete emotional roller coaster because she doesn't know how to feel she's been raised by these incredible people in this beautiful family and i i think she just has a hard time with with the news and doesn't know what to do with it and she she learns and gets closer and closer to that answer, to that beautiful answer when they all come back together, the more she spends time with her biological parents and creates a really beautiful relationship with them. And they they have kind of the perspective of having taken a step back and they're seeing her beautiful life back home and really pushing her to not, you know, to not turn away from that either. So yeah, that that those relationships were so important, and all the actors are just so beyond incredible. They're just they're so amazing. Um, Robin, Bart, Mary, Marguerite, like the whole Austin, the whole the whole group of us who were sort of on that side of the story. They're all incredible. And the second I met them on on set, we we had just finished wrapping the other family stuff, so we kind of felt like we went to a whole new movie to be with the other family. And I just fell in love with everyone on set the second I met them. And the chemistry was just so naturally there with everybody. So that helps a lot. And you were you were t- kind of touching on this a little bit before in terms of when you go through really difficult situations, the way that you kind of come out, you know, stronger or learning new things on the other side. But in the meantime, you know, we see Andy go through this process of like having to break apart a little bit, having to close herself off to her parents for a bit how it impacts her relationship with her partner in life at the time. Um, And so what are the ways in which you wanted to allow her just to like fall apart and break apart a little bit before you started to build her back together? Well, I think one, it's just, it was available to me because of the script that was written so brilliantly by Karen and Tyler Russell, the director, who's amazing. And they just put such a beautiful piece of work together because they allowed us to go there. They gave me an opportunity to be able to go there. And, you know, as an actor, that's the best part. I want to dive into the, let's go into the deepest parts we can because that's life. And it helps people not feel alone in things because we get to watch it on screen and we go, oh, I've been there. That's hard. I've been there. But then we can almost re-experience it and let it go. It's like, it's why we do what we do. Like it's, I, it's the magic of it all. So yeah, I feel like one, it's just because it was so available to me in the story and in the script that I was given. And then it was just making sure that I did my job to be as open and vulnerable and, and honest about, about how, how hard life can get sometimes, but that there can be such beautiful moments and so much light that can still exist in, in the hard times. So and I feel like that was a lot of what, what we had spoken about earlier, which was just making sure that it doesn't have to be the same situation, but that I understand what it is to feel lost. And I do, I understand what it is to feel alone. And I do. So it was making sure I was connecting on a personal, a really deep personal level to those core ideas or, or themes um, and well, feelings really. And yeah. And then just allowing myself to let it go and just be present and sit in them and relive them. And, you know, my co-star Jake Allen is fabulous. He's a phenomenal actor. So that made it uh, really special as well, because that's what I'm working off of for so many of these, these scenes. And he's got such a depth to his work. So, you know, it was such a blast working, working together on, on those, yeah, on all those really, really beautiful scenes. Yeah, he's he's really great. And I, I love that kind of touch point of the way that they're able to bring each other out out of their own comfort zones a little bit. So there's a moment where ah. Dawson is like showing her a theater space that was really important to London. And then she kind of gets him out of his comfort zone into like performing for a little moment for her. And so yeah. with Andy, how did you want Dawson to be someone that equally kind of like brings her out of her comfort zone in a lot of ways? Well, I think... I think, you know, these these two have been, haven't met before. And what's interesting for Dawson is he has this feeling like he has because, you know, of course, because mm-hmm. she looks so much like London. But I think the important thing was that they both feel safe. I think that's that's the beauty of their relationship is that they feel safe to feel those things. This is a new person. And again, whether you're looking for something romantic or not with somebody, and unfortunately at times, we, we really put that armor around us and we it seems and I under I understand why we've all felt this way I think but sometimes it just feels really unsafe to be vulnerable 
And I think the biggest thing for both of them was to make sure that they both had created a space within this relationship where they felt safe to be vulnerable and to feel the feelings and to sit in, again, the the emotional weight of it all. And they allowed themselves to both do that and they liked each other in it. And that's what kind of made them fall for each other, I think, is because it was safe. It was okay to feel how you're actually feeling and not put that brave face on and not put that smile on. They they went, no, this is how I'm feeling. They couldn't help it because what they both had been feeling were so ex- was so extreme that they really couldn't help themselves. But to have support and for someone to actually see you and sit in it with you, who you just met, is pretty remarkable. Absolutely. And and you were you were touching on this other point a little bit before in terms of just the physical differences in in creating these two characters and just the idea of, you know, their chemistry with Dawson looking very different in terms of just like physical movement around him but there's even just the fact that you know with London she kind of she's always running late but she's moving a million miles a minute and then Andy's kind of like a little bit more reserved and so they have very different body language and very different movement to each other in scenes and so what was your journey of really figuring out how that was going to look different to one another yeah I think I think it was making sure that I was paying attention to all those things. You know, the two tools that I've got as a human is my body and my voice. So that's what I've got to work with. So how can I use that to mold these two different people and make it very clear that these are two different people? So it was paying attention to how do they walk different? How a big thing was, how do they laugh different? London's kind of got this obnoxious, loud laugh and Andy's a little more reserved and she speaks a little higher and London speaks a little lazier and a little bit lower. You know, Andy in this, in this interview would be sitting with her back up straight, very proper. Whereas London would have her feet up on the desk that you're on. Like, you know, it's, it's paying attention to all those details. And then of course, having a phenomenal director like Tyler Russell, who helped navigate the days with me where I had to switch back between both characters. Um, And he was so incredibly helpful on those days where sometimes we'd be in an Andy scene and he'd be like, Oh, London just peeped in there. I was like, I know I got it. And all of a sudden I'd laugh like London and we'd be like, Nope, can't do that. So we were very, very just down to the itty bitty little details. We were very specific about those choices and making sure that we were consistent in them throughout the entirety of filming. And another group of people I really have to have to credit for this was hair, makeup and wardrobe. The second I put that long, bright blonde wig on, it felt like a totally different person and her kind of untied chunky shoes that basically fall off when she walks, which is why London also just, she's, cause she's also, she's a free spirit. She's kind of like got that, dancer in her shoes and it's you know so even just having the chunky shoes but the big baggy t-shirts you know London has such a specific vibe and feel to her whereas you know with Andy I'm wearing I'm wearing a like a full set blazer skirt tweed or you know like it's a completely different look and like really fancy shoes with pretty little socks with a frill on it like all these little details really, really help an actor dive into it. Like the second I changed just the shoes, I'm a whole different person, but let alone the hair. And again, everything I just mentioned, it was really, really helpful for me to, especially on days where I'm playing two characters to be able to make that shift uh, as easily as we possibly can. It's it's so great. And it's it's such kind of a, a wonderful and unique challenge to get to approach a project like this and to kind of have that dance between the two characters. Um, so congratulations yeah. on everything with, with the oh, film. Thank you. I'm sure audiences will love your performance in it. And thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. Thank you.